Welcome to the Revenue Function. This is Lesson 2. Our objective is basic revenue function. To understand price per unit may also be a function, and then graph and maximize the revenue function. Okay, let's look at the basic revenue function. In order to find revenue, we know that it's really just price per unit times the number of units sold or produced. So, we have this equation, revenue equals P, which stands for price, times the units produced. That's a very simple example of the revenue function. It's very basic. Let's look at an example. Write a revenue function if the price charged is $4.50 per unit. Well, we would just write it as 450 times X. And if 200 units were sold, we would plug in the 200 units to get $9 as our total revenue. Very basic. The problem is, it's not really quite that simple. Sometimes the price per unit is also a function, and we'll call that P of X. If we put a function into another function, then this is called a composite function. So remember our original revenue function, price times quantity sold. But now, we're saying that price is not just a constant, but it's a function. The price function is also often called a demand function, which you've studied before, because when a company produces or sells more, it means there's more demand and the price per unit will come down. So price is affected by that. Here is how the revenue function would look if price was also a function. So now, Look at our function notation. We have revenue as a function of price, with our independent variable being x, the quantity. So we would need to plug in, instead of just p, we have, would have p of x times x. What kind of function does that look like to you? Hopefully you're saying it looks like a quadratic. Let's look at an example. A fast food restaurant has determined that the monthly demand for their hamburgers is given by this price function, 100 minus 0.25x. So, we want to write a revenue function to model this scenario. Given what we know about simple revenue functions, we would just take the price, which is 100 minus 0.25x, times the quantity sold, which is just x. And that gives us, if we distribute the x into the parentheses, that gives us 100x minus 0.25x squared. And thus, we have a quadratic. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this example where we maximize our revenue. In this problem, we're going to look at using a linear demand function in order to create a revenue function. So let's say the demand for a certain product is given by P equals 100 minus 0.25x, where P is the price in dollars, and X is the number of units produced. So the more units they produce, the more the price goes down. What we want to do is find the number of units produced that maximize the revenue and find the maximum revenue. Well, we're not going to... We have an intermediate step, and that intermediate step is to find the revenue. Revenue is all the money a company brings in. So it's the number of units they sell times the price they charge. Now, to simplify the situation a little, we're going to assume that they sell all that they produce. So revenue is the number of units they sell times the price they charge per unit, which, given by our linear demand function, is x, e, is x times 100 minus 0.25x. Distribute the x and you're going to see that we actually have a quadratic here. Which equals 100x minus 0.25x squared. Now, what we need to do is maximize the revenue. We have a quadratic. Remember what the graph of a quadratic looks like. 
this thing is going to have a graph that goes through 0, 0, because if you see when x is 0, the revenue is 0, and comes back down. I know it's going to open downwards because my a value is negative. So the maximum revenue is going to be right here at the vertex. Now we've seen in other, I have other videos that show how to do a maximum with a graphing calculator. Let's talk about finding a vertex by hand. To find the vertex of a quadratic, to find the x-coordinate, all you can do is use negative b over 2a. Now, our quadratic's not written in our regular form, so realize that the b is 100 and the a is negative 0.25. So, negative 100 over 2 times 0.25. <clears throat> negative 0.25, excuse me, gives us negative 100 over negative 0.5, which gives us a positive 200. Now something to think about is what is that 200? Well this formula gives you the input of the vertex, or the x, so that's 200 units. So that's how many units they should be producing to, in order to max, and selling in order to maximize their revenue. Their maximum revenue comes from putting this 200 into our revenue function. So we'll have 100 times 200 minus 0 0.25 times 100 squared, which when we're done calculating, comes out to be 10,000 and now we are talking about the revenue so the maximum revenue is $10,000 for this company with this given demand. Okay, hopefully that was helpful and that you remember how to find the vertex of a quadratic. So remember that the a coordinate where the a is the coefficient of the x squared term and the b is always the coefficient of the x term. So let's wrap up. Now you can write a basic revenue function, price times quantity, but you also understand that the price per unit m, or price per unit, may also be a function, and it could be p of x. And then finally, you can graph and maximize the revenue function by finding this vertex point.